Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right into it. First of all, if you are in Puerto Rico, which I hope you are, because it's a great place. It's a great place to live. It's great people. It's just fantastic. Weather's awesome, so on and so forth. I will be at the San Juan Smokehouse tonight from 4 p.m. until they drag me out of there. So if you are uh, in the area starting at 4 just come down to the San Juan Smokehouse. If you follow me on X or Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, you can have these little nice, beautiful items here. Oh, my God, it looks so good. And then, of course, uh, if you come down, first round of beers are on me. Second round of beers are on Stephen, the owner. So I hope to see you there if you are here. And uh, we'll talk shop, and I'll tell you some behind-the-scenes stuff. Also, after this video, if you want to get really bullish, just listen to me and Kai talking today on NFA Live. Ben, we fired him. He's he's out. Of, no, I'm just kidding. So Ben it couldn't make it today. He's got, you know, Ben's got kids. And he has to be super dead, so he couldn't make it. But uh, we'll catch up with him next week on his channel. But we had some pretty good back and forth, uh, me and Guy. It was fun. And again, if you're looking for more bullishness, check that out. I'm not usually that bullish, but I mean, the things we talked about made a lot of sense. So today, of course, we're taking a look at things and uh, it's pretty good, right? Pretty great. Everybody's happy. Everybody's excited. We're all exuberant about the, uh, the the market, and I can see things doing quite well. Like I said before, I've said this I don't know how long. Nothing's going to happen until after the presidential election, and it didn't. And then after the presidential election, everything went up. I mean, at least I get one thing right. But then I I also said in 2025 is when everything starts to really pick up. Remember, the president of the United States does not take office until January, so everything that's going to happen between now and then is just lame duck season, right? You're not going to see too much action. You're not going to see a bunch of Congress uh, taking the bills and proposals and, and moving forward. It's not going to happen. They're going to, the new president cabinet is going to come in. They're going to clean house. People are going to step down. That's just how the uh, relegation of power works. So, I mean, right now, enjoy it, but I don't think this is the big move. So today, what I was talking about, the title of this video was 20% lost. And I don't know if you remember us talking about this, but compounding, right? If you have 19 or 20 different times of when you double, you can take $1 and you can compound, if you can compound that tax-free, it takes about 20 times to be a millionaire, right? Now, I don't know what a millionaire is going to be in 10 years. You may be able to buy a Happy Meal. I have no idea. But if you can do that tax-free, bing, 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 you're going to make a million dollars. Congratulations. However, you know, on this channel, how we talk about taking profits, I talk about it because I don't want you to round trip your bags, but there is a, a dirty, disgusting side of that, and that is taxes. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea. But normally, and this is between, and, and I don't know where you're at, but if you're short term or long term, you guys know in Germany, if you hold your crypto for over a year, it's tax free. In uh, Argentina, it's a little bit different. Portugal is tax free. And of course, like in places like I'm in Puerto Rico, there is no capital gains tax for me. However, on different places, Canada, United States, Europe, I, I don't know what's going on, but you're going to get taxed every time that you take out those profits, just so you know. And if you did this and looking at the same thing side by side, taxes versus no taxes, you get screwed. You get screwed heavily. So what could be a million dollars is only $72,000 because you were taking profits along the way. And again, taking profits is not bad, but if you take it 20, 30 different times, yes, you're going to pay out. So that's why I'm talking about this today, just to keep you informed. So the thing is, and I broke this down so everybody could you know, make, this, make sense of this. Even if you made a million dollars and doubled up, you still get taxed. And the minimum here for long-term cap gains are 20%. And that's not including the states. So I kind of like fudged the numbers a little bit. I said, look, if you got, if you made a million dollars and you might be up a million right now, I have no idea. Meme coins, maybe you got into some early layer ones or layer twos, you're looking pretty good and you got a million dollars. Well, you know, the government's going to take money away from that. And people will say, well, Rob, they're not going to take money away from me because I'm going to borrow against it. Have fun with that. Because once you borrow against your crypto and digital assets, just remember, most people do that during the bull market, and there's a thing called a margin call. And if you can't pay that margin call, guess what? You get liquidated. And when if you get liquidated, guess what happens there? You get taxed. So have fun with the loans against crypto. I'm not touching that. But again, coming back here, 
25% one time is still a lot, but you get pretty good money, 786,000, right? Again, if you come over here for the dollar, it's the same thing because you get 25 tax every doubling, which is a bummer. And we take a look at capital gains. Again, I don't know where you're at. These are the new rules for 2025. And just so you know, we have a progressive tax. Short-term capital gains are taxed as ordinary income according to the federal income tax brackets. Meaning if you get taxed at 35% and you're doing a short-term cap gain, meaning that you sold before a year, you're gonna get charged 35%. So and take that 25% out and add another 10%. Have fun. Or maybe you're a high earner. Now you're at 42%. Or maybe, God bless you, you're in California. You get taxed 13% on top of that. New York, 11%. New Jersey, 10 Washington, D.C., 10% in Oregon, Minnesota, Wisconsin. And these are current levels. Montana, Georgia, 5%. The only great place, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Wyoming, again, depending on where you're at, right? So that's what we have with capital gains tax. Why am I talking about this? Very simple reason. <clears throat> Losing my voice already. I need to calm down. Here is my portfolio. I did this in January 24th, 2024, as you can see right here. And you can note that I have a lot of cryptos. And I'm going to be dumping a lot in this next bear or bull market. We all talked about this. There's a link in the description where I tell you when I'm going to sell 50 to 80% of all my crypto and digital assets. And these things are going to go away. But <clears throat> what I want to talk to you today about is why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at things of why Bitcoin, I think, could reach, I don't know, 500,000, a million. I have no idea. And I'm not saying it's going to reach that in like this bull market. I'm just saying for the long term, we must think about the long term now because if we don't, we get screwed. This is my Roth IRA, which I use at iTrust. Looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Look at that. Look at all these Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Near Cardano, AVAX, Link, Stack, so on and so forth, and 67 other different cryptos. But yet over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only 11. And two of those are precious metals, gold and silver. I'm... I have no problems with those. But you'll notice down here, Pepe, Bonk, Dog with Hat and Doge. Why the hell would I put meme coins into my Roth IRA? Is that crazy or what? It's not. Because I think some of those meme coins are going to outperform. And it's only 5% of my portfolio. What do you notice? Bitcoin is by far the lion's share. Ethereum, sure, sold ton sweet. What I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm working together. Actually, I shouldn't say working. We're competing. So the guys over at Sin City Crypto, and we're going to do the same thing. They're going to use their I These guys are much, much younger than me. I, I don't have too much time before I actually collect this IRA. But the, the idea was to compete against them. They pick their different cryptos, put in a Roth IRA, and we'll see which ones do it. Or we'll see which ones went out. Because when I'm selling my 58% crypto straight off, the ones that are my IRA account, this is tax-free. I will sell all these and roll it right into Bitcoin. And that's the goal. So if I can do this, did you know you can trade within your IRA account tax-free? Now, I don't know where you're at, which country you're at, but I can guarantee you there is some type of retirement accounts that you can get into that are similar to a Roth IRA. I just don't know what they are called. I don't have a global, massive uh, understanding of everything that has to do with retirements. But I'm telling you, it can be done. There are certain options out there for you. You just have to find them. So with this one, <clears throat> we're going to go through this over the next year or so. I don't see me selling for another year, depending on the indicators. So we'll see which one wins. And again, the idea here, make massive gains, sell, roll into Bitcoin. We'll see. So talking about that and capital gains and why 20% is going to, you're going to lose it unless you do some kind of retirement thing. I'm going to tell you why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin. I think most of us are, but I, I like this part just to kind of clarify where things are going. ETFs are going fantastic for Bitcoin. The Ethereum ETF, not so much. Maybe at some point they can amend that and actually include staking. But so far, it's been sucking. This is from Eric Beltrunas. I don't know. I have his information here. I should. Uh, I know he's the ETF analyst of Bloomberg. So... That's his uh, credentials, and I followed him for quite some time. He was the one that was right, and I was wrong about the ETF being approved. Didn't think I was going to make it. Why I was wrong? Sure, I'm happy I was. 
But he says this, as a 2X Coinbase ETF, C-O-N-L, went up 62% yesterday, one day. And he says that's got to be close to a one-day return record for an ETF. It traded about $1 billion, now it's close to $1 billion in assets. Another hot sauce hit from Granite Shares recently struck gold with NVDL. What a country. Exactly. And people are looking at this in the traditional finance going, why aren't we involved in this? Why don't we have ETFs? Oh, it's because Gary Yenzer makes things so goddamn hard. So with this one, that's just one piece. Also, <clears throat> that's traditional market side. Let's go on the legislative side. Cynthia Lummis, Senator of Wyoming, states, we're going to build a strategic Bitcoin reserve. And you know, people might think, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, but we'll get into why I think it's going to actually happen. Because of this, I think we're, and me, myself, and I are actually underestimating what Bitcoin could do. And I'm not saying it's going to do fantastic, you know, $10 million numbers or something, but I think it could appreciate just a little bit. And if she's saying that, and President-elect Trump is saying that, I think we're on the right path. But this is where it gets crazy. This is Jason Lowry. What is his book? He, he, he had a book about the power of Bitcoin. And he makes this statement here. And he, I think he works for the National Defense Department. And he talks about policy recommendations. I'm just gonna read the first parts. Even with a friendly crypto policy, the US is vastly underestimating Bitcoin's national strategic importance by viewing it solely as a financial asset. Quick stop here. That's all I see it as too. This is how I see it. I see it as a financial asset. You can do remittance, you can make payments, you can hold it, store a value, hedge against inflation, four years, great. That's how I see it. I never thought of it like what he's gonna say right now. And this is where my eyes got opened. Bitcoin represents the use of physical power. That would be Bitcoin mining, right? In watts. To secure cyberspace. I'm like, huh? For the first time, people can achieve cyber sovereignty by physically securing information and digital assets across cyberspace in a trustless, peer-to-peer -peer way, similar to how we secure land, sea, air, and space. Revolutionally advanced in computer theory and strategic values, obviously undervalued. I thought about that. I go, well, <clears throat> besides remittance, does this make any sense? What's a real world uh, view of this? And I can look no further than Michael Saylor. He said this months ago and I missed it. Imagine if you could put things on the Bitcoin blockchain, whether it be data, personal information, or digital ID, then you could get out of being hacked. And Michael Saylor came in and he said, look, <clears throat> Actually, let me go back. Michael Saylor first said ordinals are really awful sawdust donuts. It's a very stupid idea. Then on May 2nd, 2024, he's like, you know what? Digital IDs on the Bitcoin blockchain could be very good. We can verify a lot of data. We can verify who it is and we don't get hacked. So what I said over here, I said, before you read this, ask yourself, how easy is it to hack computer networks in not just banking in public, but how about in government networks? And before people say that's never happened. Yeah, it has. OPM breach 2015, the, the Democratic National Convention, Convention got attacked in 2016, and they leaked a bunch of data. The Colonial Pipeline in 2021. Now, Colonial Pipeline, that data breach was not specific to the government itself, but it affected the individuals and the people that had to use the, the, the Colonial Pipeline, which means the American government as well, for our energy needs. And that, I can see, could actually be something big. So when he talks about this, I'm like, holy smokes, if the government gets into this, I mean, where, how far can we go? Also, just for the normies, uh, Raul Powell is going to be on one of my favorite uh, podcasts, uh, CEO, Diary of a CEO with Stephen Bartlett. And uh, I just look at this and I'm like, Stephen Bartlett and, and Diary of CEO, they've got millions and millions of, uh, of followers. So I'm just going through the list of what makes me bullish. And then also on top of that, MicroStrategy is, I don't know if you heard about this, but they're going to buy another $42 billion over the next three years. Their total market, their total market cap as of press time was $50 billion. Now, you're going to have to help me with this one because it says split evenly between $21 billion in equity and $21 billion in fixed income securities. Not for sure if they're going to buy all that Bitcoin, but you know, if Michael Saylor or MicroStrategy is behind it, 
it would behoove them to buy as much Bitcoin as they possibly can. And why is that? It's because their stock keeps going up. Look at this. In one day, I think that's the day, but over five days <clears throat> after the presidential election, went from 230 to 265. You're outpacing the S&P 500 vastly by just this stock. How about one month? How about six months? How about one year? And why is that? It's because they hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Why in the heck these other corporations are not figuring this out is beyond me. Just hold 2%, 3%, well, I don't care, 1% on Bitcoin on your balance sheet. And you are essentially our proxy for Bitcoin in what's going to be probably the, one of the biggest bull runs of all time. I just don't get it. This was from Bitcoin Archive. MicroStrategy breaks 50 billion market cap, now worth more than Ford. And as you can see, Ford has been slipping. Uh, car company, what are you going to do? But if I was Ford, I'd probably take a look at this and go, you know, maybe we should do this. Also, on top of that, you got Microsoft who is voting, I want to say, on the 9th to see if they're going to buy Bitcoin. Microsoft, they are the upper shareholders or whatever they're called, have already come out and said that they don't want to do that, but that is not up to only them. So we'll see if they actually come in and actually buy Bitcoin. They should, especially with all the competition that they have. And then also on top of this, <clears throat> just looking at crypto stocks, which is why I think other corporations are gonna look at this. Crypto stocks keep pumping. Coin, Coinbase is up 30%. MicroStrategy, Mara, Riot, Spark, Clean Spark, and Hut, which are all Bitcoin miners, are up 9, 20, 21, 19. And if you take a look at the average gains or ROI of an S&P 500, you're looking at is 9.2%, somewhere around there. No, I think it's like 7.5 to 9%, somewhere around there. So just by holding these, you're already crushing the S&P 500. What does this all mean, Rob? Let's get to the point. The point is, I think, I know Bitcoin is not as sexy as, uh, say, like a, a pocket or some kind of meme coin or something that's out there that's going to give you 100x. But it's the, the safest asset in the most volatile market, which is crypto and digital assets. So for the long haul, I'm going to bet on Bitcoin. And that's where I'm going to go. So what I wanted to say is, if you're going to bet on Bitcoin, if you hold Bitcoin, Maybe it would behoove you to take a look at these retirement accounts wherever you're at. I personally use iTrust. Uh, and this is all their different assets that they that you can buy into. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, XRP. I mean, it's just a boatload. They've added a lot of different ones on there. I've had them for three years. And if they can get through that crappy bear market that we went through when FTX, Celsius, Voyager, and BlockFi all collapsed, as well on tops of Three Arrows Capital, Luna, and a host of others, and they can make that, I'll bet on them again. So there's a link in the description. Looks just like this. And you know what's great about it? The fees. There's no more fees. Right, Rob, doesn't make any sense. How do I make money? Okay. There's no more monthly fees. When I got in, it was 29 bucks a month. Which I'm like, cool. I don't want to deal with this stuff. You guys deal with all the paperwork and blah, blah, blah. Now all I do is go, okay, if you want to make a trade, it's 1%. I'm like, that's not bad because I pay a boatload on Coinbase anyhow. So you can trade within your retirement account, 1% fees, and that's it for today. So look, I know I'm a little bit long. My voice is going. I've been fasting for five days and I'm just getting into it, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff.